Kung Fu Panda 4's official trailer is here, so let's talk about it. Now, the trailer begins by revealing through Master Shifu that Po will no longer be the Dragon Warrior. He will advance to be the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace, which makes sense. At the end of Kung Fu Panda 3, Master Ugwe revealed to Po that he was his true successor. Me? Throughout every step in Po's journey, Shifu has been encouraging Po to become something more than he already was. Punching and kicking? You think that is what the great Master Ugwe saw for you? And that's continuing into the fourth film in the Kung Fu Panda saga. Since Ugwe's passing, Master Shifu has been the Grand Master of the Jade Palace, but eventually that role is going to be taken up by Po himself. It's his destiny to not only train more Kung Fu masters, but to protect the Valley of Peace and Kung Fu across the world. But I have to wonder, why is Master Shifu's staff no longer wrapped up in the Kung Fu Panda 4 trailer? I mean, in the original film, Tai Lung broke the staff that had been bestowed from Master Ugwe to Shifu. And ever since then, Shifu took that staff and mended it and has been using it ever since. So why in Kung Fu Panda 4 would he decide to create a new staff or get a new staff? It looks identical to the one that he had been using for years. So why would they change that? I don't understand that at all. And I have to admit, there's a lot of little things like that throughout the trailer that I'm kind of confused by and frustrated by. It feels like there's some weird inconsistencies. Another example of that is the next moment in the trailer when Poe is meditating underneath the peach tree of heavenly wisdom. He's attempting to meditate to find inner peace, which is something that Shifu described as something that could take decades for some masters to achieve within a cave. That was something that Master Shifu was attempting to achieve himself in Kung Fu Panda 2. But once Po had faced Lord Shen and accepted who he was regardless of his past, we were told that he had found inner peace. It seems you have found inner peace at such a young age. So why is this something that Poe is struggling with again? I don't really understand. I've embraced the idea that Poe will continue to evolve and change over time, that he will continue to need to accept the new version of himself that is being forged through every new adventure and responsibility that comes his way. But I don't understand why Poe would be struggling with something that he's already mastered. From my understanding of Poe, he's moved far beyond needing to find inner peace. He's also mastered Chi and is capable of training masters of all different species from anywhere across China. But juxtaposed with the meditation was an epic fight with a stingray, which is something that I did find to be very cool. Poe is finally donned as the dragon warrior with the cape and the hat and all of the kung fu butt kickery that he had always dreamed of since the very first moment of Kung Fu Panda. I mean, it even looks like he's walking across the very bridge that he dreamed of at the beginning of Kung Fu Panda. I think this does a fantastic job of showing us the true heights that Po has been able to achieve. He has truly become the warrior that he had always wanted to be, which of course means that he's going to have to face new challenges and grow in some new way and the villain that he will be facing in this new adventure will be the chameleon. Now she's described as a tiny lizard who can shapeshift into any creature large or small and apparently her goal is to possess the kung fu of every master villain that Poe has sent to the spirit realm. To accomplish this, the official description of the film describes her desire to take Poe's Staff of Wisdom, which would give her the power to re-summon all of the master villains. Now it appears that the Staff of Wisdom is the staff that Master Ugwe had bestowed to Poe in the spirit realm at the end of Kung Fu Panda 3. I can't, I can't take that. Just take it. I have a bigger one. But I'm a bit confused as to why she would need the staff to enter the spirit realm. I never perceived the Staff of Wisdom to be an actual powerful relic. From my perspective, it was only because Poe had been granted Chi by all of his students and all of his friends and all of his family that he was able to escape the spirit realm and return to the mortal world. I didn't think that that staff was the reason that Poe was able to accomplish that feat. 
And I think that's supported in the way that we saw Kai returning to the mortal world as well. With your chi, I will finally be able to return to the mortal world. It was only when he stole the chi of masters across the spirit realm that he was able to use their chi to push himself into the mortal world again. If Ugwe's staff was that powerful, why wouldn't Kai have taken that when he took Ugwe's chi in Kung Fu Panda 3? Or he could have stolen it to begin his rampage on the mortal world. I feel like the idea of Poe's staff of wisdom being something that actually holds the true power of chi is kind of a weird retcon that I don't necessarily love, but apparently it's going to be the key for the chameleon to break into the spirit realm. Now the other thing that I don't really understand is the chameleon's desire to take kung fu from the master villains. What does that mean? From my understanding, Ugwe developed kung fu as an art form of self-defense. His studies in the mountains looking over the Valley of Peace next to the Pool of Sacred Tears was what forged kung fu into existence. So is the chameleon taking the kung fu wisdom from these master villains? Is she taking their memories? Or is she taking a part of their soul? From what we were shown of the chameleon using the staff of wisdom to take the kung fu from Tai Lung, it looks like a move that appears to be very similar to stealing chi, but instead of being able to completely control someone's entire being, the master's body is left alive with free will. And I think they could have big ramifications for the chameleon. If the chameleon wrongs all of these villains from Poe's past, what is stopping them from all teaming up with Poe to attempt to defeat her in the end? Like the whole idea of the enemy of my enemy is my friend feels like a relationship that could happen because apparently all of those villains will return at some point in the story. But the chameleon isn't alone. The chameleon has a full army of lizards backing her up. And that will mean that Poe will have to assemble a new army, which again is something that I don't completely understand. I mean, in Kung Fu Panda 2, we saw that Poe, the Furious Five, and Master Shifu were able to defeat Shen's army. So why wouldn't Poe recruit the Furious Five and some of the other masters that he's met during his time as the Dragon Warrior? Or he could just recruit all of the pandas that he trained in Kung Fu in Kung Fu Panda 3. That was literally the whole selling point of that movie was that Poe was going to meet and train all of these other pandas within the secret panda village. So where where are they? What are they doing? I don't understand why they have to go into this new city to go find and build this new army of criminals. Because we've already been shown that Poe and the other Kung Fu masters are very competent and very capable of defeating armies using the people that they already know. But Kung Fu Panda 4 isn't going in that direction. Instead, Poe will be teaming up with a Corsac fox named Zhen and they'll be recruiting some of the best crooks and criminals alive. They will build an army out of the many warriors within the den of thieves. But there's another issue that Poe is going to be forced to face in Kung Fu Panda 4. Now that he's becoming the spiritual leader of the Valley of Peace, Poe will also have to find and train a new dragon warrior. And through past descriptions of the movie, apparently that's going to be Zhen. Now I think there's some interesting ideas that could be explored through the introduction of Zhen. I mean the idea that there's a warrior who is not the conventional hero is something that is very reminiscent of the original Kung Fu Panda. No one would have expected that Poe could be such a strong and enlightened and powerful warrior because he was a big fat panda. What are you gonna do big guy? Sit on me? <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> so it could make sense that the next dragon warrior would be someone with a dark past who could have been a villain and maybe had even explored that a little bit in the criminal underworld, but now is becoming reformed through her interaction with Poe. I think that could be something interesting. But I think the hard part for me is knowing that there are so many Kung Fu warriors that have trained their entire lives. They've sacrificed everything for Kung Fu and would do anything to try to save China. We've already seen someone who had a dark childhood and was beat down and hardened and has become someone who is soft and kind and caring and empathetic because of her interaction with Poe. And that's Tigress. I think it's hard to see this new story developing and we don't even get 
any introduction around what the Furious Five have been doing. We haven't seen the Furious Five in The Paws of Destiny or The Dragon Knight, and now in this trailer, we're not seeing the Furious Five either. What are they doing? Why aren't they there? They've been by Poe's side through every adventure thus far, so where could they be? I think it's just hard when there's these new characters being introduced and ideas that are being like contradicted or revised from the past while there's all of these characters that we already care about and are invested in. And I think the idea of the Dragon Warrior title needing to be passed on kind of brings into question what the Dragon Warrior even means. Why does there have to be another Dragon Warrior after Poe? I mean, the secrets of the Dragon Scroll have been revealed to everyone throughout China. Anyone can become powerful and capable and become a great Kung Fu master. So why does that have to be distilled down into one individual? Apparently Poe is going to discover that heroes can be found in the most unexpected places. And then over time, Zhen will embrace his training and become the next dragon warrior. I think it's just sad to accept that Poe's best friends won't be along with him on this next adventure or will be considered for this important title in the world of Kung Fu. I mean, for some reason, Mr. Ping and Lee are coming along to this brand new metropolis, but for some reason, the Furious Five is kept at the Jade Pass Alice, what, what's going on? I do think it's cool to see Poe using some of his chi abilities that he was able to master in Kung Fu Panda 3 out in the wild. And I think it's fascinating to see the chameleon transform into Poe. I liked seeing that while the chameleon looked very similar to Poe and Tai Lung, there were some key distinguishing differences. There were more scales and bumps and different texturing across the chameleon's body to clearly articulate that they were only resembling the creature creatures that she transformed into. I'm excited to see how the chameleon's powers will work and what their backstory is and what their motivation is to take on all of these master villains. I'm hopeful that Kung Fu Panda 4 will continue to develop Poe's story in a very satisfying way. Right now I'm feeling a bit of unease, but when March comes around next year, I'm gonna be in the theaters. I'm gonna be there for Poe's next tale. I'm ready for Kung Fu Panda 4. But what do you think? What did you think of the trailer? Let me know down in the comments and what other ideas you'd like me to discuss further into the world of Kung Fu Panda leading into the fourth installment of the saga. And finally, thank you so much for watching and have a magical day.